Welcome to the third episode of our Let's Talk About podcast series, the LuxCMA audio channel for high-level insights and updates. I am Pitas, the Transaction Executive at Allen Novi Luxembourg, and today we have three special guests who will be joining us to discuss sustainable finance, and in particular, the European Green Bond Standard. The EU Green Bond Standard Regulation came into force on 20 December 2023, and its provisions will apply from 21 December 2024 on. This makes it an ideal topic for us to discuss today and shed some light upon. With this episode, we will be taking a deep dive into what the Green Bond Standard is and what it will be bringing to the markets, in addition to some insights as to current trends from the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. I am here with Adrian Danchu, Managing Associate at Linklater's Luxembourg, Yolanda Gita, Senior Associate at Clifford Chance Luxembourg, and João Garcia da Calva, Regulatory Affairs Officer at the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. Adrian. The concept of green bond investment is certainly not new, but could you please give us some clarifications as to what the new EU green bond standard regulation brings to the table for investors? Hi Pete. So, investors interested in sustainability now have plenty of options labeled as green or sustainable. Yet, the true meaning of these descriptions and their accuracy frequently remains unclear. This ambiguity is set to diminish in the near future, specifically for select bonds through the European Green Bond Standard, or EUGBS for short. The EUGBS represents a voluntary standard instituted by the European Commission designed to bolster the development of an open and robust market for green bonds across the European Union. It applies to all types of bond issuers, including public and private issuers, and and provides them with a voluntary standard. These bond issuers can be financial or non-financial companies located within and outside the EU. The EU GBS has been formulated with the intention to facilitate the growth of the green bond market and to promote its transparency and integrity. It is also designed to support investments in environmental sustainability more broadly while simultaneously enhancing protection for investors. The EU GBS also ensures that bond issuances are labeled and aligned with the EU's environmental and climate objectives. Thus, the EU GBS is devised to offer individuals, companies and institutional investors alike a benchmark for evaluating green investment choices and to simplify the process for investors making such evaluation. So the EU GBS serves as a mechanism to scale up and raise environmental ambitions of the green bond market throughout the European Union. How do these standards fit in the already existing landscape and what are the essential requirements of the EU GBS? That's a great question, Pete. So, issuers can decide for themselves whether to issue their bond as a new green bond. They can also choose to comply with other sustainability standards, such as the green bond principles of the International Capital Market Association or the climate bond standard created by the non-profit International Climate Bonds Initiative. However, if an issuer decides to issue their bond as an EU green bond, they must adhere to the required specifications. The EU GBS establishes the following essential requirements to be fulfilled. The first one is taxonomy alignment. In general, all the funds a new GB raises must be entirely devoted to projects that comply with the criteria set out in the EU taxonomy. Second condition is transparency. Full transparency on how the bond proceeds are used through detailed reporting requirements such as pre-issuance of a green bond fact sheet, allocation report and impact report. Then there's the external review. An external register reviewer must review the bonds to ensure compliance with the regulation. External reviewers providing services to issuers of EU GBS must be formally registered with and come under the regulatory oversight of the European Securities and Market Authority. This requirement will enhance the quality of their services and guarantee the credibility of their evaluations, safeguarding investors' interests and the integrity of the financial market. Another key element is that bonds can only qualify as EU GBS if the issuer prepares a prospectus in accordance with the EU prospectus regulation either because they are required to do so or choose to do so voluntarily. João, can you give us some insights as to the market demand in relation to sustainable finance and in particular green bonds? Thank you, Pete. Uh, so from our perspective, the interest and appetite of the market for all things related to sustainable finance continues to be undeniable. A clear example of that is that just two months into this year, the Luxembourg Stock Exchange's LGX, the Luxembourg Green Exchange, hit its largest milestone to date, now counting with 1 trillion euros worth of outstanding green, social, sustainability and sustainability linked bonds on the platform. Our LGX Data Hub is also following the market on this and as of June, July of this year, the Data Hub will start showing data on the alignment of bonds with the taxonomy regulation, something that will be required of green bonds under the UGBS. Nevertheless, the growth of the market and of all the sustainability standards that Adrian mentioned also exposed investors to new risks, particularly greenwashing, meaning issuers claiming that their bonds were green and sustainable through and through when this was always not the case. 
This was also one of the reasons that led the European Commission to propose the UGBS. At LuxSE, we've seen the market respond well to the added strictness of the standard because the issuers know that this will also mean reassurance for their investors. There is definitely an interest in the possibility of issuing a green bond under the UGBS. The questions are now which type of issuer will be the one taking the first step and if will it be an EU or non-EU issuer. There being a real market interest to go green, so to speak. Do you see any stumbling blocks from a practical point of view in the implementation of these green bond standards? One definitive point of concern is the legislative decision to require the publication of a prospectus under the prospectus regulation in order to be able to issue a green bond under the UGBS. An unintended consequence of this is that issuers will find this requirement too limiting and resort to other available sustainability standards in the market. We believe that a much preferred alternative would have been to maintain flexibility in a allow this to be optional, with the possibility of attracting even more issuers. The real impacts of this option will be seen when the standard is fully applicable by the end of this year. Let's now turn to Yolanda and touch upon the different regimes set out in the regulation. Is my understanding correct that there are alternatives to the EU Green Bond standards? Hi Pete, thank you. Yes, you are correct. A key provision that appears in the regulation, which was not in the European Commission's original proposal, and represents a concession made to the European Parliament, is the provision of an optional disclosure regime for two types of additional bonds. Uh, the first one is bonds marketed as environmentally sustainable, which essentially means a bond whose issuer provides investors with a commitment or any form of pre-contractual claim that the bond proceeds are allocated to economic activities that contribute to an environmental objective. And the second type, sustainability-linked bonds, it's now defined in the regulation and it means a bond whose financial or structural characteristics vary depending on the achievement by the issuer of a predefined environmental sustainability objective. Similarly to the full EUGB standard, the optional regime provides for both specified pre-issuance and post-issuance disclosures. Is there already a roadmap as to what these disclosures should be? Yes and no. The templates and the detailed information for the actual pre-issuance and voluntary post-issuance disclosures are not yet available and have to be developed by the European Commission before the regulation becomes applicable, essentially before the 21st of December this year. However, the regulation itself does not leave the market in the dark. We know what we can expect. For example, in terms of pre-issuance templates, we know that for both types of bonds, they will include, among others, disclosures on transition plans. Uh, whereas, for example, for bonds marketed as environmentally sustainable, there will be a disclosure obligation in relation to the minimum proportion of bond proceeds to be used for activities that are environmentally sustainable under or in accordance with Article 3 of the Taxonomy Regulation. On the other hand, the sustainability-linked bonds in terms of disclosure, given their nature, um, the rationale, uh, level of ambition, material reality, calculation methodology or key performance indicators set by each issuer. Do you see any potential obstacles and are there any legal implications with these? Well, it's certainly an ambitious project uh, and initiative. It, it has been in the making for five years. So first, from a legal perspective, the choice of form, that of a regulation, uh, is meant to reduce discrepancies that could result from the national transposition of, uh, of an act, uh, of a directive, for example, in the individual member states. It can be anticipated that this would lead to a reduction in costs and also control to a coining of a uniform standard based on an actual regulation. However, its use in practice will actually depend on, among others, the careful calibration of the remaining delegated act and the availability of information to issuers, including, for example, as a result of certain ESG regulations uh, coming into force in a phased-in manner, like, for example, the CSRD, and also the identification by the issuers of actual taxonomy-aligned activities. Turning to Joao again, could you give us some practical insights as to the implementation and usage of these disclosure templates? Now, this definitely connects to my previous point on addressing greenwashing concerns. Um, although also not mandatory and not as comprehensive as the requirements for EU GB, the disclosure templates for bonds marketed as environmentally sustainable and sustainable to link bonds are meant as an option for those issuers who want to communicate added reassurance to their investors by disclosing relevant information under stringent requirements. Do you feel there could be reservations as to these alternatives to the EU green bond standards? 
overall, although the standard is not applicable yet, we have seen interest from the market in aligning with the UGBS. Our team at the LGX Assistance Services has assisted several issuers in their sustainable bond issuance and reporting based on the currently known UGBS requirements. This is from peer comparison with insights on industry peers and best practices to structuring and reviewing the green bond framework and to post issuance reporting. All of this by having as a starting point the EUGBS. The reporting intricacies of the EUGBS are also addressed by the LGX Academy courses and these have also been gathering considerable interest. However, I have to agree with Yolanda and say that the actual use of the EUGBS will depend on how flexible and adaptable the standard will actually be in practice. Other options of sustainability standards will still exist and these will certainly look to the EUGBS for the best practices and for how to improve, but also for what to avoid. Thank you all for joining today for this podcast. Stay tuned for our next podcast where we will explore the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation. Thank you for listening to this episode of Let's Talk About Podcast. If you enjoyed today's discussion, don't forget to leave us a review and share your feedback. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast and join us for future episodes as we continue to bring you the latest insights and updates from the world of sustainable finance. Until then, keep thinking green.